everyone. We will be um, looking at a class of functions called rational functions in this video. Um, so we take the inspiration from rational numbers, which are numbers of the form p over q, um, where p and q are integers, right? So for example, you could have negative 1 7th, you could have 8 9th, you could have 3 4th, you could have 1 over 2's. But um, these are all ratios of integers. That's the definition of rational numbers. And so, um, in, in an analogous manner, we define rational functions, which are to be of the form px over qx, where p and q are polynomials. Okay, remember polynomials are um, basically many terms, right? So, things like 1 plus 3x over x minus 2, or x squared plus 1 over x cubed minus 3, etc. So these are all considered to be rational functions. Now these are rational because the coefficients are all rational, there's not going to be any square roots and stuff like that involved, and these are all, both, both numerator and denominator are going to be purely polynomials. Okay, so let's start with the simplest possible rational function which is 1 over x, okay? So what we have here is that the numerator is a constant polynomial and the denominator is a simple linear function or polynomial. Now, let's do an analysis of this function. When we say analysis, we, you know, we want to talk about range, we want to talk about domain, we want to talk about what the graphs look like, or any other interesting features. So let's begin with the domain, okay? So we notice that because x is in the denominator, the domain is going to be all numbers except x equals zero, or we say that the domain is all real numbers except zero. Now, what about range? For range, we notice that if x is large, right? So, for example, 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over 10,000. As x becomes large and large, this value becomes smaller and smaller, right? And the same with um, negative numbers. So, the range will consist of um, very small numbers, but it can never be zero, right? Because for it to be zero, this has to be infinitely large, which is not possible. And then you notice that if x is small, right? So, if 1 over 0.1, 1 over 0 0.01, 1 over 0 0.001, these become larger and larger because it's 10, 100, 1000. So the range is everything except zero. So again, the range is also everything except zero. Now the next thing we want to look at is the graph. Okay, For the graph, um, now we, we kind of know some things, right? We know that when x is large, right, x large, y small. So the graph is somewhere here. Similarly, if x is negative and large, then also it is small. It's close to zero. Now, what we do need to understand is what happens near zero. Okay, so it's important that we are not saying what happens at zero, but what happens near zero. So when we say near zero, we have one set of points here, right? When x is very, very close to zero, but positive, it's really large, right? x small, y large. And the same thing is going to happen if you have negative numbers. This is going to be negative 10, negative 100, negative 1000. However, it's going to be over here, right? Because that is negative y. So if you connect these, what the graph looks like is um, th 
these are negative numbers here so sorry this this large because this is negative this should be over here and this is going to connect in that way so there is this line right in the middle this line right that the graph is never going to touch the graph never touches this line it gets very close to it so if you were to zoom in these lines are going to be very very close to each other but they never touch and we give a special name to these kind of lines such lines are called asymptotes okay and what does that mean this means this is a line that a function f of x gets very 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 close to but never touches and then based on um, now these asymptotes can be any line however to make things simpler we first try to understand the two simple cases namely when the asymptote is vertical and when the asymptote is horizontal and thereafter we go and look at a few examples of when the asymptote can be any line so it can be any slanted line okay, so our first analysis of the function 1 over x tells us that well we find the domain the domain is such that the denominator is not zero and then we realize that we remove this point from the domain and to plot the graph we have to understand what happens near that point zero and what happens near that point zero is that the graph goes to infinity or negative infinity and never touches this line it never crosses this line and we get this new kind of line which we call an asymptote now here's a definition for the two asymptotes that i was saying we can we will begin by talking about the vertical and horizontal so the definition says a line x equals a you remember if you have x equals some number that's a vertical line is a vertical asymptote of the function y equals f of x if y approaches positive or negative infinity as x approaches a from the right or from the left what does that mean let's look at this first graph here this is suppose x equals a and this is f of x what we are saying is if we were sorry wrong button if we were to approach a from the right at this point from the right or from the left one of them so it's an or in this case it's from the right we notice that the output goes more and more to infinity right here if you approach from the left it goes more and more to infinity positive infinity or it could go to negative infinity or it could go to negative infinity from the left so one of the four cases that would make this a vertical asymptote and the same goes with horizontal the only difference being now if y approaches some fixed point right because now you want this to be the y value so this is y equals b y equals b as x approaches plus or minus infinity so you're saying that no matter how much negative i make this input the output is always getting fixed at b or no matter how much how, how, how positive i'm making the input the output is fixed and the output is fixed okay so that that those are the two definitions so for vertical asymptote we need y to approach plus or minus infinity so it shoots up right parallel to the vertical line for horizontal asymptote it has to approach the horizontal line which means that it has to approach a line which is a constant so it's y equals b some number it approaches some number so one new thing that we have found is that when analyzing rational functions we need to consider um, what is called these asymptotes which are basically points that are removed from the domain or range and 
these points that are removed, um, we want to look at the behavior of these functions at those points. So that's all for introducing these functions. Um, next, we're going to look at how we can use graph transformation um, in order to plot. Now that we know the basic shape of a 1 over x function, right? This is the basic shape of a 1 over x function. Um, we want to be able to use this information to plot other rational functions, um, which are of a specific type. And then further on, we learn a more general method of graphing all rational functions. That's it for this video. Thank you.